How many days did you work from home 10 years ago? And how many days was this last month? You'll probably see an increase in that. And if that's the case, you're not alone. So maybe it's about time that we discuss cybersecurity with respect to working from home today. Um, for example, are we under attack? How, how do you know this? Are there any big attacks going on today? And my favorite question, what is a Citrix traffic jam? Thank you for joining us. And my name is Liu Jan Koning. I'm CTO of Ontoit. And from our cybersecurity operations center at HQ, uh, we welcome you to Thread Talks. And today's subject is, does remote work? Let's get onto it. Welcome to Thread Talks. Let's delve deep into the dynamic world of cybersecurity. Let me first welcome our two guests of today. First of all, Rob Maas, field CTO of Ontoit. Um, Rob, um, do you have an enterprise firewall at home? Um, I have running a firewall at home. Uh, it's not an enterprise firewall, but I've configured as if it is an enterprise firewall. Yep. So you're probably not a typical work from home user then? I don't think so. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see how that helps. And my other guest is uh, Luca Cipriano. He's a threat intel specialist at Ontoit. And he has the gift to uh, explain very difficult things in layman's terms. So I'm looking forward to that. Luca, welcome. Um, Thank you. When did you last dream about hackers or fending them off? <laughs> well, uh, I can safely say that uh, here I live the dream here. <laughs> so it's uh, a continuously uh, like a day-to-day -day thing. Luca is still a little bit asleep, but well, good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so in this episode, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, we have three threats that we uh, lay out for you. Uh, one is the Citrix Access Gateway or Netscaler. That came out, there was a big flaw. Uh, uh, a couple of months ago, actually, and it's still very current. The uh, second one is about tunnel crack, and that's an attack on many different VPN solutions, actually. Uh, very interesting to see uh, how that works. And uh, finally, another uh, VPN solution. Uh, it's a FortiGate uh, SSL VPN appliance um, that also uh, where we also saw a couple of flaws. So a lot to uncover. Um, and there's also going to be a threat hunt. So um, look out for a code that we uh, show you and that we uh, let you hear uh, throughout somewhere in this uh, thread talk and you can win a very cool, cool uh, t-shirt uh, that we then uh, ship to you. There's uh, a bunch of them available. So um, Rob, let's start. Um, so enterprise deal a lot with remote work these days. Um, is it is, is the cybersecurity aspect of this, is it any in any way big, a big difference to regular cybersecurity or um, anything else? No, it's not really different, but it has changed over the years. Um, we used to come into the office and then everything in the office was safe, so you connect to the network and you had a safe connection. At least that we was what we assumed. <laughs> uh, and now we basically bring our devices to home and we still need to have that connection. But the question now is how are we going to enable that and make sure that it is safe? So it's basically shifted, but yeah, it's still cybersecurity. So you're then talking about a, uh, an uh, IT environment indeed with a perimeter and uh, like you said, safe inside. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that there's companies that are founded in the cloud era, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, they may treat it differently because yeah. they, they're yeah. not so they, they, Yeah, exactly. They don't have that le basically legacy or the, the traditional way of setting things up. Uh, so they start in the cloud and they go to SaaS applications. And normally with SaaS applications, you uh, arrange the security around them per SaaS application. So it's really uh, application or uh, tool-based focus. Uh, you, you focus on what you want to protect instead of where the, uh, uh, where the threats come from. And um, the more traditional approach was you come inside and everything is open for everyone. It doesn't matter what application. And basically that's shifted now uh, to from home to where you need to con uh, connect. So that's, that's a, quite a difference uh, where you start basically. Yeah, so the fortress that we used to have isn't really applicable anymore, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, it's changing. I think every uh, company now has SaaS applications, so it's even more difficult then because then you have a hybrid environment where you still need to protect everything that's inside and also need to think about protection on your SaaS applications. It also sounds like it's a bit uh, harder to protect. In a, I mean, we used to have <coughs> MPLS lines, uh, event connections that are secure and private and everything. Wasn't that easier or better then? Um, it, it was, I would say it was different. Um, still, with, you can say we have a very secure network and everything was MPLS, so basically private. Eh? So once you're on the network, you are free to do uh, and to go wherever you uh, want. Uh, but the downside, of course, is if, if there's one system infected, it basically could spread across the whole network or the whole building if you were uh, looking at an office. 
um, and that, that that's changing now. And I, I guess also it, it depends for what you use it because uh, in a way you can also say that you are uh, outsourcing the issue about security in a certain uh, um, in a certain way as well. So some things that probably if you are in pre on premises you need to secure yourself, and then now you trust a third party to secure it for yourself. Yeah. So, and, and, and if you want to secure this whole thing, what, what kind of things do you need? I mean, there's this thing called VPN, for example. <laughs> yeah. and that's, that we're going to talk about a couple of flaws that have to do with that technology. Luca, can you explain this thing? What is VPN? Uh, yes, so a VPN is a, basically a virtual private network. Uh, so basically you establish uh, uh, an uh, encrypted uh, connection uh, over a, a less secure network, like it could be the internet, for example. Um, and VPN... Uh, um, can be used uh, well, uh, for, for different uh, purposes, like for example as a normal user you could be uh, privacy aware and you want to have more privacy so you can have a VPN solution, uh, but as a, a company, um, as uh, Rob mentioned before, for example, you need to make sure that uh, your employees can connect to the network, you can use a VPN solution for that, uh, but also sometimes um, side-to-side -to -side connection from between branches can be set up with uh, uh, a VPN solution with the IPsec tunnels, and okay. that's how you use the VPN. Crucial part of uh, the infrastructure, then. It better be safe, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. so, and and uh, Rob, it also sounds a bit like you, I hear you speak a lot about SASE. Uh, is that similar? Uh, yeah, SASE so is a relatively new term. Uh, it says, stands for uh, Secure uh, Access. Uh, and I forgot. <laughs> Security uh, Access Service Edge. Service Edge, yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I just mentioned. We it. use a lot of uh, acronyms in yeah, uh, cybersecurity. Some are also similar. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we'll look it up in the LOA then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the idea is uh, basically focused around uh, connection. So we have the secure access is all about giving access to users, to brands, offices, third parties, but also SaaS applications, for example. Uh, so uh, if you zoom out, it's basically a central point where everything is connecting to. And then the security part, the edge part on it, is basically that we say, okay, but what, who is allowed to connect? What are you allowed to do? Which applications can you access? Uh, do, do we need to do some malware scanning, et cetera? So basically all the features we have now on a layer seven firewall are now basically part of that SASE solution. Oh, yeah, so it's much, much broader scope basically in securing connections. Yeah, and, and make everything very flexible. And VPN is a crucial part yeah. of SASE, of course. Under it's the basically, basically a building block to set up the SASE environment. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, so and it, 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 I mean, we have seen an increase in, uh, in in remote work. I mean, of course, we have had the pandemic, but I mean that that has, of course, uh, uh, show uh, shown a, bun a bump in there. Is it difficult for corporations to um, to facilitate all this? Is there or, uh, is there anything to say about that? I think for a lot of companies, it's, it's more difficult to change their thinking about security and where to focus on than it is to set it up because this, yeah, you can basically yeah, simply buy this clicking, yeah. especially SASE is basically just you click and uh, uh, you, you pay your money yeah. and then it's being set up. But you need to think a little bit different on how you are going to protect it. all the that. design behind it, how you're going to rearrange your security. and uh, yeah. What would be the crucial difference then? Yeah, you, I think it's, uh, we, we, sometimes we mention zero trust. This is basically the difference. You really should think about what are you going to protect instead of where is the threat coming from. Um, and that's especially when you basically split up your network in all kinds of different areas, uh, so especially all the home offices. Uh, we can, it's hard to protect all the home offices. We are not going to place a firewall there, et cetera. Uh, but we can protect the applications and the data that, that, that's our, that are important for us. So we should focus on that and protect them. And that, that's a really shift in thinking, I think. Yeah, and also, uh, as, as we will see uh, later on, like uh, most of these devices that allow, for example, VPN access, they are edge devices uh, and uh, they can suffer vulnerabilities. And uh, it is really important that if you have a edge, an edge device that basically is a door where everybody can knock, uh, if something happened, you uh, have uh, sort of, uh, like a plan in place that you can patch uh, uh, vulnerabilities as soon as possible. Because basically you are uh, offering uh, an op open, uh, well, a closed door uh, to your company. Well, we suppose that it's closed, but it should be closed at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid we're going to find out that sometimes yeah, it's Yeah, you find yeah. out that sometimes it's not as closed as you would expect. Yeah. Do, do we also see like an increase of attacks then? I mean, if, if more companies are have equipment like this available, do we see, do we see 
uh, an, an increase more I, tax? I, I think that nowadays we see an increase in tax uh, in general because like uh, uh, well uh, with the use of internet uh, and uh, basically also the internet of things everything needs to communicate with everything and of course uh, this will leads to uh, also a, a good market for attackers uh, more opportunities to earn money so I, I think overall uh, um, is not really uh, the increase of a tax is not uh, um, a working from home specific uh, uh, issue. Oh, that's basically, of indeed, what you, like you said, uh, everything is connected and there's more money to be made because yes. everything is di digital nowadays. Uh, so, yeah, ransomware, I think, is the, the best example in this. It, it, yes. it, apparently, it works. Um, so, that's basically, if there's money to be made, then you, yeah, you will see people. Like, uh, uh, threat actors yeah. and uh, well, yeah. criminals. Uh, did we see uh, an increase uh, when, for example, the, the war in Ukraine uh, is there? Is that uh, is, is there a difference in there, or and in fact, do we care if that is changing? Uh, well, of course, we do care because uh, we see it also with, uh, for example, um, um, OT network. There are more industrial controls. There are more. Uh, um, one thing with IT network as before they were really separate things now they are uh, basically um, uh, while well, the, the line is getting thinner um, uh, they are connected uh, over internet as well and those are for example good targets for uh, a, a state actor because like can you imagine if you uh, manage uh, to use for example a VPN solution to enter in a um, in the environment of a, um, I would say, electric uh, plant, uh, power plant, and then go uh, manage to go into the OT control and uh, well blow it up or just uh, mm -hmm. close the electricity. Uh, and and would, uh, would uh, any equipment that you use for remote work also be part of that whole chain then? Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm, I'm, I meant. You're offering maybe an extra entry point mm -hmm. that maybe before uh, was not so straightforward, but now you need to open it. So. And Rob, I can imagine that if you if you are used as an enterprise to have this. Uh, fortified network and everything inside is m more or less trusted. Uh, and then suddenly we put in a device, that, a VPN device, uh, uh, mm -hmm. let's say a Citrix uh, gateway. Uh, yeah, um, if you're in and you're in again, I mean, yeah. that's, that sounds a bit... Yeah, so if you're going to set these things up or basically enable a remote network, then you should also not be assume that everything then from, from that connection onwards is being saved. Um, so basically what you should do is the VPN is fine, but then say to the user connecting over that VPN, you're only allowed to this application and really restrict access to other applications if it is not needed. Uh, so basically segment your network also on the inside. Um, there are some uh, firm believers on the internet basically that says VPN is dead. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> VPN is a perfect solution. Yeah. Uh, you see oh, we wouldn't be talking <laughs> about vulnerabilities in remote No, no but uh, even SASE is built on VPN. It's more about the thinking and the process behind it. How do you set up your network? Uh, it's not VPN that's the bad thing here. It is that uh, a lot of times VPN is being set up and give you gives you access to the whole network. Yeah, and if then things go sideways, then you know, basically you have uh, big problems. Yeah. So uh, as always, a solution is a good design behind it. So of your uh, network and security. Yeah, we've actually seen this uh, in our security operation center as well. Huh? Some customers who have a relatively open, more traditional network, then if something happens there, then yeah, um, it yeah. can be everywhere. And then yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've how, seen how things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I've seen things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll probably uh, talk about it in a minute. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, the first um, the first uh, uh, attack we're going to uh, discuss. It's about uh, Citrix Netscaler. Um, what is what's it used for, uh, Luca? Well, uh, the Citrix Nescaler is one of those uh, devices, the edge devices that are at the edge of your network. Uh, well, the Nescaler itself uh, can be used for different uh, uh, things, like for example, load balancing or web uh, uh, application firewall. Uh, but in this case, for example, can be used also as an, um, uh, a gateway for the for the for the VPN connection, uh, and uh, it depends on the uh, on the setup that you have and. In this specific case, uh, basically there was a vulnerability uh, that was called CVE 2023-3519. Uh, <laughs> and um, basically it was... Who has a, not heard of it? Yeah, right? <laughs> so basically this, uh, this CVE, uh, and with this CVE, an attacker could explo exploit a, a flow in the, in the code of the, of the Citrix Netscaler uh, and basically uh, just uh, send uh, maliciously craft uh, uh, HTTP request and uh, with this one it could uh, basically trigger uh, remote code execution on the device. So, so let me 
make sure that we all understand this correctly. Yes, so you're saying that there's this flaw and the only thing an attacker needs to do is, well, this is a difficult thing for an attacker, but basically it sends a packet to your device. To right? your device, yes. Indeed. And that's it. Because then, as, then, as we mentioned before, it's uh, it's an open door on the internet. Because don't need any they passwords need to, or no, username it's pre or anything? authentication so you don't need password, you don't need uh, authentication, you don't need user interaction. It's just uh, the way that the device handles the request. And, uh, and this device is built to be accessible from everywhere mm -hmm. on the internet because yes. you could so, be traveling, you could be anywhere. So. Yes, indeed. Kind so of, kind of. basically exploiting this flow then you could uh, execute remote code on the device. Execute remote code. Yes. So it means that from uh, a remote place, uh, you could uh, have the device behave uh, in a malicious way that uh, it was not supposed to uh, behave. And in this specific case, for example, uh, the attackers uh, used uh, this device to, um, uh, sorry, used this uh, this uh, vulnerability uh, to basically upload a malicious uh, uh, payload, uh, like an encrypted uh, well uh, uh, file with uh, several tools inside that they needed the to then move for, forward in the in the So then basically the Citrix access gateway becomes like the the, 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 the laptop of the of the attacker. Yeah, well, yes. And they're can, right inside of the network. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. On the edge, but... And you can imagine if then, if you have not segmented your network then, what, uh, what could happen next? Yeah, of course, you can start uh, a lot of movement. Like, for example, in uh, some specific attack, uh, there was an investigation, they found out that uh, after entering, they started, they, they had in this payload uh, tools, for example, to scan the network and uh, uh, looking inside the, the, the Netscaler, they could manage to get credentials from the Netscaler and use those uh, uh, with the Active Directory to basically uh, gather information about uh, uh, host names and usernames in the network and then from there move laterally until, mm -hmm. well, they could uh, act on the objective that they had. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so far it's not really comforting uh, to me, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but it says uh, 2023 is the number of the... Uh, of the uh, it, it, it was discovered in July, I believe. Yes, right? it, was, it was discovered in... Uh, in high July. score, uh, 9.8 on the CVS. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really... It was critical, 9.8. Uh, why are we still talking about it today? I mean, haven't we patched all this? Well, the, the funny thing is like that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the important things for these edge devices is that you have a plan uh, to patch as soon as possible. Uh, I do have some numbers, for example, because this was uh, discovered on the 18th of July uh, and um, uh, it was published uh, on the 18th of July and by the 22 of July uh, we uh, it was uh, estimated approximately 15,000 devices were still vulnerable uh, and if this is not enough and that, that's 15,000 companies eh? because you have one such a device or maybe two yeah, yeah, that could be, well, a different uh, not persons, we don't, uh, not, not, not remote not, workers. Not, no, no, not remote workers, but okay. uh, companies. Uh, and furthermore, on the August the 5th, uh, they still, uh, uh, well, approximately 7,000 uh, devices were still vulnerable. And uh, an estimate of 600 had a, an actually uh, web shell on them. Like, so the attackers were uh, actually doing something. Did you see this with customers? Uh, we did have some customers, so we had a, a company uh, called uh, Mandiant that uh, basically they uh, published a, a script uh, that was uh, to be used against uh, the, the, the Netscaler to look for indicator of compromise uh, for some artifacts. Uh, and we had uh, a few customers that uh, actually uh, had the script returned positive. Uh, so we had the great opportunity. So we proactively scanned once yes. the book came out? We, we, uh, as soon as the, 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 the script came out, we contacted our customer and then we told them, hey, there's this uh, script. We knew that we're using uh, Citrix and Scaler. We said, like, yeah, just run the script because of these vulnerabilities. Um, a couple were like uh, false positive, of course, but then we found some true positive. But the funny thing is, like, the true positive is... Funny. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, kind, uh, of, kind of. Kind of funny. Makes it interesting, I think. <laughs> Yeah, well, the interesting, you, interesting yeah, yeah. Is, the, is the word. The I have to admit, I find, yeah. The, okay. the, the interesting thing is that the, uh, the artifacts that we found, they could be uh, tied to older vulnerabilities. So not this vulnerability, but uh, from a few years uh, ago, uh, a, a few years prior, when they were not even customers uh, of ours. And uh, we, I could find, I, I saw some uh, uh, files with all the username and password that were just stored there to be then exfiltrated on a, on a later stage from yeah. their environment. So we know of an issue, we go to all customers, go investigate proactively, and then we find an even older one. Yeah, exactly. But this shows how difficult it is to have visibility about these hedge devices, because mm. you, it's not that you're going to... That's also not the first 
time and actually also not the last. I mean, we no, recently no, no. got another. It, it happened uh, quite often, unfortunately. It happens quite often, but not only specifically Citrix, but like all. Yeah, uh, basically every edge device, of course, yes. is constantly scanned, and especially if it is a popular device like Citrix or uh, also all the firewall vendors that are popular like Palo Alto or Fortinet, they're, they're constantly being scanned to see if there's any yeah. vulnerability because they're on the, mostly on the edge. So it's quite easy to check them out and see, hey, can I get in? And sometimes when there's a vulnerability <coughs> and it's patched, and uh, it is also like attackers will look at the patch to see what is patched. And sometimes and patching, it doesn't mean rewrite the whole code. It means that you put a patch on it. And maybe there's another way to still exploit the yeah. same or similar issue. Yeah, or you know what to do around. with the still unpatched uh, devices. Yeah, also, yeah. 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 Uh, Rob, um, these, these things are flaws, vulnerabilities. In the end, that's mistakes in, yeah. in software. Huh? Um, I get a lot of questions by from customers from everybody basically why aren't we simply fixing all those issues why do we why are we so sloppy as a it industry or is this an what's your what's your view on that uh, so i think there are a few things here to consider uh, first of all security still is relatively new although we practice it for years now uh, so we use the right software again in a trusted environment where nobody cares and everyone was trusted and we just use it and now we need still nowadays we need to think about security so it's still a relatively new uh, way of working with your software, developing software, doing the testing. Um, I think all the companies uh, are doing their, uh, especially the edge device, on the edge device, doing a really good job or really trying hard to make it secure, as secure as possible, but they're still human. So a, a, a sloppy mistake or a faulty mistake, it's easy to be made. Uh, also, configuration errors are uh, easy to be made. Um, so there are a lot of ways uh, to basically abuse or misuse an, uh, a device on the edge. Um, but the list of potential problems is simply so big because it's millions yeah. of lines of code probably. So there's always a way, a hacker basically is creative and there are always ways to get uh, around solutions or protections. Um, I think the, the, the most important thing is here, uh, if there is a vulnerability to be, uh, and once the vulnerability is being disclosed and there is a patch, you really should patch immediately. Uh, if you cannot patch within 24 hours, let's say, uh, on an edge device, then you should not put that device on the edge. Yeah, so you're saying you should focus your patch efforts to uh, to, to those? Especially on those edge devices, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, for internal, we can have a whole different uh, discussion on how we, you could... Yeah, the, the these are still uh, steps in the attack chain. I mean, uh, here we're talking about initial, fo initial foothold, uh, but then like, for example, for uh, internal devices, you might have privilege escalation and all these other sort of uh, things that the attacker needs to do, uh, which, I mean, they still need to be fixed, but it's not as urgent as a device that that grants initial foothold for an attacker. Uh, it's the same for uh, the Netscaler nowadays. I think there are still, uh, we can scan for it, but there will still be Netscalers on the internet that are not uh, being patched yet. Uh, if, if such a device, you should assume that it's all being, already being breached by uh, some hackers. Is multiple times else? probably. Yeah. Probably multiple times, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, we've even seen people creating malware uh, to infect <laughs> open. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's with yeah. this one and remove the exactly. basically patching vulnerability, uh, like a worm patching vulnerability. Yeah. The good guy, the good hackers. <laughs> yes. It? Yeah. Um, so if this, is, if a CV like this comes out, huh? uh, so it is, it's a there is a patch, maybe maybe you can immediately install. Sh should should companies shut down their Citrix gateway? If that happens, um, uh, that's no, just go ahead. Go ahead. It's a good <laughs> question uh, because yeah. the best uh, security, of course, you get if you turn it off. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah. then everything is uh, being solved, or at least uh, you have a workaround. Um, I think this is also where we go to the traffic jams uh, uh, because this was the <laughs> advice of the uh, Dutch uh, government, the, the NCSC, yeah. yeah, the Citrix oh. traffic jam, uh, where basically the NCSC said, uh, said, "Okay, this is so urgent." Um, just turn it off if you haven't patched it already, yeah, and yeah. basically everyone, uh, as a result, a significant needs. portion of the co of the of the of the companies and the, and the government uh, did that, and then everybody yeah. had to go to their exactly. office. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it depends on which device it is, uh, how uh, well important it is. Uh, the two things that you need to keep in mind is always on the design. Think about redundancy. So if you need to uh, shut one off uh, for patching, then you have the other one that you can fill over and like do uh, a patching in that way. But also patching can break something. So think also rollback uh, situation where you can roll back before the patch. So and how do I know this? 
I am a company. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe using Citrix Access Netscaler, uh, Citrix, Citrix Access Gateway, but maybe I'm using well the Forty Gate, for example. I mean, uh, uh, you got to somehow know that this kind of thing happens. I mean, do we need to go on the dark web all the time and search for it? Uh, I mean, that's impossible was, uh, for uh, uh, enterprise. In this case, it was uh, quite easy because it was so big that it came in the, in the news. No, it was just it was also at the six or eight o'clock journal. I see his points. I mean, uh, I guess that has to do also a bit like if Dear you viewers, you have to understand that this guy is constantly on Twitter and looking <laughs> at everything, and this guy is constantly searching into everything. So yes. this may not apply to you. But let's see what we For get. For us, it's a bit more easy because we have like process in place, but uh, this has to do also with the uh, maturity of the SOC of an ent uh, enterprise or for the, the security department. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I mean, sometimes, uh, Security vendors uh, can help uh, with that, like pro uh, proactively sending an uh, email and informing about uh, their products having an issue. I was but actually also, also hinting us. on your yeah exactly yeah so as yeah. us we we that's what we do we basically monitor we then we inform our customers when these kind of things happen and we help them taking actions or remediation or investigation and this kind of thing. Yeah, because we know what well, you already explained with the Citrix Access Gateway. We know which customers run crucial equipment, and yeah. then we see something happening. We actually are constantly triaging everything that we see. Huh? Yeah, of course, of course. We have an idea of uh, the environment of our customers. Of course, you can't know everything because I'm pretty sure that uh, also not all the enterprises have a good network, uh, um, well, a good visibility on their network. So you can't know everything, but at least you can have uh, uh, an idea of who uses what. Uh, we have a, we have a good point yeah. to see to look at that. Yeah, and when we're speaking about zero trust, I mean, the first step on zero trust is uh, no, 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 your environment uh, protect yeah. services. I know what you want to protect. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. ground jewels, yeah. the, the, yes. the, 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 highest, the highest relevance uh, of your protect service, those need, you need to understand what's in there and make sure that if uh, an event like this happens that you have a, indeed a patching machine in, or, or a process, a machine, machine not necessarily a like a robot or so, but uh, <laughs> uh, your organization should be a machine that, that can quickly respond to yeah. these uh, crucial, because there's no other way. That's not, I mean, if, if there was another way, then we wouldn't have to rely on patching. Because uh, we need to think that uh, threat actors, they are basically uh, scanning continuously the internet for this kind of things. I mean, you have also a website where you can look at, the, at which IPs are vulnerable to what, like Shodan, uh, I think you mentioned it uh, in the previous uh, episode. Uh, so attackers can leverage that as well. Yeah, yeah I, I always get a bit of an uncomfortable feeling if the solution is patching, because I, we know how many things do not get patched. You're always behind. We all know about the zero days where there's nothing you can't immediately, or you should immediately, you're already too late when the knowledge is out. Huh? But yeah, apparently for these, there's no other way here. I, I think like patching is, is, is not the solution to everything, but it is a step that is necessary to patch this problem, but then the solution to everything is a, a, a better cybersecurity hygiene in the in the company, a good uh, design of the network. There's a lot of steps that contribute to the And solution. then at least you limit the impact. Uh, so let's say you, you forget the patch or you, you didn't quickly respond, then at least by doing the other steps, you can hopefully limit the impact. Yeah. I think we need, because also you need to think that this is not the only problem. You have also insider threats. There are people that can sell access to the company on the dark web uh, to, to, to get hacked. So basically the, the, the threat can come from inside as well. So there is not one solution, but there are a lot of steps that you can take to help mitigate. And uh... Okay, uh, gentlemen, let's get to the second uh, vulnerability we'd like to discuss, and uh, that's tunnel crack. Um, it sounds uh, dangerous. <laughs> uh, tunnel is probably to do with the VPN. Uh, so how who, who is under attack in this, in this with this vulnerability? Who's what's where, who's vulnerable? Well, uh, this Citrix again or no, no. These vulnerabilities are um, let's say uh, the attacker can uh, leverage the um, uh, basically how the VPN uh, uh, works, and uh, basically it is more about the client. Uh, so it's uh, it's about the client that established the the connection. So it's not the uh, appliance itself, but maybe it's you with your laptop that you have the VPN client and you start uh, the VPN connection. Could, could um, also be part of the SASE solution, for example, because that always includes a client on your de device. Eh? Yeah. SASE, uh, uh, things like Globe Protect, uh, yes, uh, indeed, uh, indeed. Connect, what, of uh, course. all the solutions. Yeah, okay. yeah so it can be VPN part of that. Uh, although I, I believe that probably this, this specific vulnerability may be a, a bit more affecting. Uh, uh, I would say maybe more the user that uses it for privacy or for connection, but it can also affect the company, uh, of course. How does it work? Uh, 
Um, so how does it work? There are two uh, different uh, vulnerabilities. One is uh, uh, basically the local net attack, and the other one is the server IP attack. Um, so in the uh, local net attack, basically, uh, first of all, we need to uh, explain that for this vulnerability uh, to be exploited, you need a situation where you have a, a man in the middle. So basically, somebody needs to be in between the connection from point A and uh, point B. Um, and uh, basically, what happens... I can give you an example. I'm working from Starbucks, for example, and I have the free Wi-Fi on Starbucks. Um, and I have an attacker that is pretending to be the uh, Starbucks uh, free Wi-Fi. So he's going to broadcast the same SSID, so the same name of the connection. He has a stronger antenna, so basically my laptop, my client, uh, well, my laptop will connect to the attacker instead of... The you probably don't notice this, right? No, you don't notice it also because it's the same name. Uh, so that, that can be one of the possible way that this happened. Uh, for the local net attack, uh, what, uh, what happened is that basically uh, the attacker will uh, assign you an IP address, which is in the same subnet, uh, in the same uh, uh, subnet of the uh, target website where he wants to leak the information from. So this way, uh, let's assume that uh, you want to visit the website uh, that is at 1.2.3.4. Uh, uh, basically, the attacker will assign you an IP address that is uh, 1.2.3.5 in the slash 24 uh, network. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, the computer will think that when you want to visit that website, it is in your same network. Mm -hmm. And normally, clients uh, basically will not route the traffic through the tunnel when the destination is in the same network uh, of the... Yeah, so you basically trick a website that's somewhere on the internet yeah. uh, to be found very local, so therefore kind of trusted from the perspective of your machine. From the perspective of your machine, thinks yeah. it's in the same, in the same network. Yeah. So the attacker, what the attacker does, it will forward your request to the VPN, so you establish the tunnel as normal. But every time that you visit that website, uh, while well, the traffic will be tunneled out because the client thinks that uh, it is on the same network. So you think you're safe and you think you are in your SASE solution or your VPN, and uh, but but in fact someone else could be. Someone else could be basically well, he's dropping the traffic. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, need to get the. the well, uh, so I think that sometimes people have a, a wrong idea about how uh, what is a VPN and how it works, uh, because when you visit, for example, a website that is HTTPS. Uh, so basically, you have already an, an uh, encrypted connection to the website. So it's not that uh, the traffic to that website will be in clear text. But if, for example, you visit a website that is just HTTP, HTTP without a S, <laughs> then uh, the, the traffic will be clear text. Yeah, and or combined with another can... attack. I mean, usually yeah, multiple okay, can... techniques are used uh, together, of course. Yeah, yeah, you it's can quite fundamental it that uh, when you think my VPN is applicable, basically it's not. Right. Yeah, ex exactly. The thing is like you think you're secure, but but you're not. The the other attack works uh, similar, similar uh, in a similar way, but it leverages the the the, the, the DNS. Uh, so um, basically, it's the same situation where you have an attacker um, in, in between, uh, and basically the attacker uh, when when you try to establish a connection to your VPN server, you want to say, hey, I want to connect to well, vpn.com, that is your uh, VPN server to establish it. Uh, and basically the attacker will tell you that the IP address of that website, uh, it's actually the IP address of the target website 1.2.3.4, the one that he wants to uh, basically um, uh, eavesdrop the, the traffic. So what happens is that still the tunnel is established, but every time that you connect to that website, so basically the client thinks that you're connecting to where you establish the VPN tunnel. And of course, the traffic to where you establish the tunnel is not tunneled in the tunnel, because otherwise you have like a, a, a loop. Yeah, another loop way to trick the system into, into not using the VPN tunnel. As yes, a, as exactly. A how, do we, how, do, how do you fix this? Hmm. Way? How do you fix this? Uh, well, because I mean, there are some solutions. For example, in the um, local, uh, local net attack, uh, one of the solutions will be that, for example, the VPN client uh, uh, will uh, block the connection to the local network. So when you're connected to the VPN, then you are not able to reach mm. the lo local network. It's a matter network. of uh, stricter configuration of your VPN solution. Then. Yeah, in the, on the, on the client. downside is, of course, that then your printer, for example, is not reachable. Uh, yeah, indeed. Moment. So, for example, if you're at Starbucks, it's, it's okay. It's not a problem. But if you're working from home and you need to connect the VPN to the office, uh, then uh, maybe you have like an accountant that needs to print. 
So then, yeah, every time he needs to print, uh, he needs to turn off the VPN, take the, the print. Cannot print anymore. So, so tunnel crack is very good for uh, the environment, actually, I just learned. Um, okay. The, um, we, I promised that there would be a treasure hunt today. So now is the time. You'll see a code in, in, uh, in your screen currently, but I'll also uh, read it to you. It is 022406. And if you uh, email that to us, to code at thread-talks.com uh, then you will uh, win a, a t-shirt uh, from us the first 200 will get one so uh, please uh, send them to us i'll repeat it once more the code is two uh, sorry <laughs> the code is 022406 and send it to code at thread-talks.com all right that brings us to um the third uh, vulnerability and that's about uh, that's actually in a firewall uh, a 40 gate firewall it's uh, commonly used um, in the SSL VPN uh, portion of it um, again this is like Citrix uh, a, a device that's supposed to give us access and then there's a flaw while well, we kind of have we learned we kind of have to expect uh, uh, um, uh, expect this kind of thing to happen from time to time and your answer is probably, yeah, a patch machine, and we need to uh, <laughs> figure that out. But let's first see, so what does this thing do, actually? What's SSL VPN? I mean, we talked about VPN and now SSL VPN. Is that any difference, same? Uh, well, uh, basically, it's just a uh, uh, VPN uh, over, uh, well, uh, uh, SSL. Uh, I think uh, we will go more in the specific uh, in the videos that we're going to do uh, later on, because otherwise uh, it's going to so uh, take now quite it's, long. It's, it's for, similar, it's almost the same maybe in the, in the let's differences. Let's say it's a bit different in the techniques. Maybe we okay. can cover it more in details okay. when we're going to record the, the, the separate uh, episode, because it's going to be uh, quite long to explain <laughs> already this. Um, so basically, uh, the the vulnerability in this uh, uh, in this uh, Fortinet uh, uh, device on the SSL VPN is similar to the other vulnerability that we talk. We have you have a, a, a door that is open to uh, to to the internet uh, and that everybody can uh, knock on. Uh, this specific vulnerability uh, it's a, a, a heap buffer overflow. Uh, so the heap is a, a part of uh, of uh, of the memory, uh, which uh, is basically uh, dynamically allocated. Uh, for um, well, functions that the machine will need to uh, run, uh, the processes that will will need to run that are not known at the compile time. Um, so basically, uh, what happens is there is an overflow. So the the heap uh, allocates memory for running processes or doing some actions. Uh, what the attacker does, it will uh, basically send a packet that is uh, bigger than the space that is allocated for the for the heap. And due to a lack of checks, uh, what happens is that the um, basically the the, the heap uh, gets overflowed and it can overwrite some parts of the other memory that is allocated. So, so if as I understand an, correctly, the attacker is able by putting a, a packet that was never meant to be uh, received by that by this device uh, contains a bit of code that if in a very clever way overrides the code that it, that actually runs is supposed to run the VPN function basically or um, it's part of the code of the, of the yes it can it, it can overwrite a part of the code that is already used or a part that is uh, so you're basically that is free rewriting well. the logic of, the, yeah. of, of so your device it's it's like yeah. if you have for example a bag and you start to pack things in the bag and uh, you just uh, fill your bag until the max but then there is no check to see that the bag is full and then you keep filling it and then the bag uh, overflow and the things are uh, outside and in this case that is the same the memory is filled and then it overrides another part of the memory yeah so uh, by putting too much in uh, if i would put too much in your bag i would basically uh, uh, make your uh, car dirty because it overflows yeah, <laughs> yeah like basically yeah. so and so you uh, can't drive no, normally when you have this kind of uh, vulnerabilities or attack uh, sometimes the outcome is um, not predictable. It can lead to a denial of service, so the machine not working anymore. Uh, but it can also uh, lead to uh, remote code execution. So uh, the, the the extra part is a code that then it gets executed because overwrites a part of the memory that has the. And then we're back to where we talked about uh, with the Citrix X Gateway because there was also a remote code execution. Yeah. So then again, we are in the heart of the network. Yes. You have initial foothold, and then uh, from there you just uh, move around. Um, like, for example, for this kind of issue for us, uh, well, it's easy. Uh, we do manage, uh, well, uh, 40 gate firewalls uh, as well. So, like, uh, for example, as soon as we knew about this, we uh, checked our customers' uh, environment and we saw who was vulnerable. We contact them and say, hey, we need to uh, Immediately upgrade as soon as possible. So, yeah, yeah uh, the one that they were using, this solution. Um, 
So, well, I think, uh, again, uh, act promptly on this kind of issues and patch as soon as possible. It helps. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, so what can we do about all these things? Huh? Well, I, I patch, patch, patch in these S devices. Well, uh, we kind of know that by now, I think. We talked about uh, uh, zero trust a bit um, uh, because, I mean, you've got to assume at some point that we've actually seen that, that, that those, those vulnerabilities are being exploited. Um, Rob, can you explain once more? Um, there's, there's also a thing called the bla blast ratio of an attack, huh? Um, yeah, uh, how, how much, how much, how, how bad is it when, when, when people get, I mean, if, if we assume that you are compromised at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let, let's go to the traditional network where we basically said everything is open and we need to enable remote workers. So we put one of the vulnerable devices uh, on the edge. Uh, once an attacker comes in then, then the blast radio is basically your whole network because everything is open, no, nothing is segregated. Uh, so the hacker is in and can try to attack every machine that's in there without any uh, basically boundary or checks. Um, so what Zero Trust does basically says, okay, we're going to protect uh, everything that matters to us. So we make protect services or small segments in the network where we put those things in. And then we make strict controls on who's allowed to access those applications or data. Uh, and once you have done that, if the attacker comes in, then he's in one of the such protect services, so in one little segment. Uh, and if then the attacker tries to move around, uh, lateral movement, tries to see what he can attack more, then at least the blast radio is for that part in that protect service in that segment. Yeah, so once the, this per, the attacker is in, then yes, he has access to this particular application that yeah. this solution is for, but then he has to start again, basically, to actually. go actually go to the actual crime. Yeah, so the blast radio is hopefully very small, depends a bit on how big the segment is. Uh, and then at least it is kind of controllable where you need to check uh, what's affected in the uh, in the uh, attack. Yeah, so going towards a zero trust and, uh, kind of way. One, uh, one, one thing as well, if you have like a product surface and for example, you have uh, some devices they with, uh, for example, EDR solution as well, then uh, when the attacker is, is, is limited there in that segment, he will try anyway to uh, well, do some exploit or the vulnerabilities, and like with behavioral, uh, well, well, with behavioral analysis, you can also detect this, and mm -hmm. it is an extra help. Different pattern in traffic. Yeah. Different pattern okay. of traffic is, is that something that that user or that host usually do? Uh, yeah, it's so basically the visibility you get yeah. once you segmented your network. Yeah. Exactly. And most of the time, there's also authentication or multi-factor authentication. That's the problem with this. But today, the, the, the things we discussed today, that doesn't really it's play before, a role. Right? This one. Before, yeah. yeah. So, so even if you have everything, yeah. Uh, it, 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 yeah, like so, so many times in cyber, there's many many different attacks that can happen. You have to fend them off, uh, all, all of them basically. Um, well, uh, we'll probably see in another episode of Threat Talks uh, how authentication can also be a problem. We will, uh, we will maybe discuss yeah, this in another episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, before I uh, thank my guests, um, let me um, explain. We have uh, all kinds of material available about all the threats that we uh, just discussed uh, about. So there's infographics on the three different uh, threats that are available at threat-talks.com. If you go there, you can download them, free to use. Um, for example, if you are preparing a presentation in your own organization, it's uh, yeah, well, uh, use them. Uh, there's um, uh, great material available for you to do that. Um, thank you, guest uh, Rob. Thank you very much, Luca. Thank, thank you, you very much for your contribution today. Um, viewers, listeners, thank you very much for uh, 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 tuning in to this thread talk. Uh, if you like what you saw, uh, please um, like us, uh, subscribe to to this channel in your favorite app, um, so you, you're sure to. Um, to uh, get the next one automatically in your queue. Um, so the cadence of these thread talks, there's one uh, extensive, extended episode like this one every month, and then every week following on that, um, there will be uh, shorter videos where we go actually deep dive into the more technical details also of these individual threads. So there will be, in the following weeks, there will be one about Citrix Netscaler, there will be one about Tunnel Crack, etc. So uh, keep an eye out for those. And again, if you subscribe, you will get them automatically. Um, if you want to reach us, we are uh, very uh, curious to your all your feedback you you have. Uh, send us an email at team at thread-talks.com, uh, please. And uh, feedback we actually also reward um, with a t-shirt that was part of the thread hunt. So if you forgot the code or, uh, uh, well, no problem. Uh, there's another way uh, to get the same thing. So with that, uh, from our sock floor here at HQ, um, I thank you very much and hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.
Thank you for listening to Threat Talks, a podcast by Ontoit Cybersecurity and M6. Did you like what you heard? Do you want to learn more? Follow Threat Talks to stay up to date on the topic of cybersecurity.